Hi guys, the a7 III is by far one of the most popular cameras Sony have ever made. So they have got a lot to live up to when they create the new version, the a7 IV. But what can we expect from this brand new camera in 2021? That's what we're going to be talking about today in Camera Rumors. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the rumors surrounding the new camera, the Sony a7 IV. Now the a7 III was an incredibly popular camera. Every time I turned a corner when I was at an event or anything like that, someone had a Sony a7 III in their hands. So Sony have got a lot to live up to when it comes to the rumors and specs when it comes to the Sony a7 IV. So uh, I really wanna have a look at the specs, uh, looking at the pricing, and also looking at when this camera is going to come out because I really want you to make the best informed decision on either buying the a7 III now or just simply waiting maybe up to a year for the Sony a7 IV to really see if it's worth a spot in your camera bag. I also want to thank Sony Alpha Rumors for all the rumors that I'm going to be mentioning now. So without further ado guys, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna look at is the overall build quality and the design of this camera. Now, the Sony a7 III was actually quite a petite camera. Uh, compared to a lot of the Canon and even Nikon cameras, it was quite small. The grip was quite small, but even the buttons and the button placement was just ever so slightly off. It is the third iteration, so they haven't nailed it quite yet. But I must say, compared to the Sony a7R IV, Grant New is a lot more expensive camera. The button placement and even the button design is a lot better. The grip is a lot larger and they've also got locking pins on the top of these cameras to prevent you from by accidentally knocking and changing any of, for instance, the exposure wheel. So having the designs of this is a lot better than the A7 III. Now, another thing that I really liked about this camera was the actual display and the EVF. So that's the electronic viewfinder. The electronic viewfinder of the A7R4 is really really good now these specs usually bump up the price quite a lot so these are the two things I'm not expecting the a7 IV to have so the screen I'm guessing is going to be a lower resolution screen that we do have currently and I'm also expecting a lower resin a low resolution EVF but apart from that I would expect a lot of the build design from the uh, a7R4 to be replicated in the a7 IV so currently the a7 III is a 24 megapixel full frame image stabilized sensor. So I am expecting a slight boost in megapixels and the actual image quality of the a7 IV. I am expecting this camera to be around 30 to 32 megapixels. Would put it roughly at the same of the Canon R, but a lot lower than the Canon R5, and obviously a lot lower than the Sony Alpha 1, as this is going to be more of a budget orientated full frame camera. Now, another thing I'm expecting is actually be a faster readout. So although it has got an increase in megapixels, I'm expecting the processor in the a7 IV to be a lot quicker, which means you're going to be able to upload and download the files a lot quicker, as well as having a longer buffer. So you're gonna be able to take more photos continuous shooting. Now talking about continuous shooting, I am expecting this camera to be around about a 10 frames per second, which will put it the lower end of what Sony can do. But again, this is going to be more of a budget orientated camera. So do bear that in mind that it isn't going to be as amazing as the Sony Alpha 1 that was released only a few weeks ago, because obviously that is almost a six and a half grand camera. This camera isn't gonna be nowhere near that pricing. So a lot of the specs you're going to be looking at are going to be lower than the Sony Alpha 1, but they are going to be better than the current Sony a7 III. Now, another thing that I think is going to be increased is the actual video specs. What was really loved about the a7 III is its photography, but also video quality. So it was a really good video camera as well as being obviously taking photos. So at the moment, the a7 III can offer four frame 4K at 30 frames per second. So I am expecting an increase up to 60 frames per second in 4K. I'm also probably expecting to have it 6K, but down sampled to 4K at 30 frames per second. I'm also expecting, because obviously the a7 III has, I'm also expecting to have S-Log and a bunch of other features copied over from a lot of the other Sony cameras, such as the Sony a7R4 and the Sony a7S III. 
Now, one of the tech specs I do expect to be the same as the A7 III is the actual image stabilization. Currently, this offers up to four stops of image stabilization, including an image stabilized lens. And it's not something that I expect Sony to kind of re-engineer and make it even five or up to six stops of image stabilization. I actually expect this to be the same, offering up to four stops of image stabilization in the new Sony A7 IV. So another thing I expect to be actually the same as a lot of the Sony cameras out there is the battery. Currently the a7 III, the a7R4 use an FZ1000 battery, which is a good decent battery that offers a good amount of battery life. Uh, now if you are conservative with it, you can probably get around about a thousand photos out of it. And with the new processor, I imagine it going to be a little bit more energy efficient, but I can imagine the battery life is going to be the same between the a7 III and the a7 IV. Now you might think this is a little bit of a downside. You think battery quality has come a long way in the last three years, but I actually really like that a lot of camera brands now are actually using the same battery as the previous camera. They're just kind of re-engineering it so you can actually fit more juice, but in the same size, which means if you're already in the Sony ecosystem, you don't necessarily have to buy a load of new batteries for a brand new camera. It's something you're going to be able to bring forward unless the batteries are too old. So it's actually something that I really think Sony and Canon are doing really well, is they're actually using the same batteries throughout the entire range of cameras. So enough about tech specs, how much is it going to be and when can you purchase one? Well, to be honest, I think this camera is going to be around two and a half thousand pounds. Currently, the A7 III, you can probably get it on discount for between 1700 and 1800 pounds. And obviously, because this camera has been out for a while now, you're gonna be able to get it up secondhand for around about a thousand pounds, depending on condition. So I think two and a half thousand pounds puts it roughly in the right kind of area within the kind of ecosystem of Sony. I don't want to make it too expensive, uh, but I also don't want to make it too cheap because obviously they don't want to undercut a lot of their uh, APS-C cameras, such as the 6600, which comes in at around 1300 pounds. So I think they're going to price it pretty much exactly the same as the Canon EOS R6, which is Canon's kind of flagship premium camera. So out of the pricing, I think around two and a half thousand pounds possibly with a slight price drop for some kind of autumn sale because Sony often do kind of like a cashback deal of like two to 300 pounds. So I can imagine if the Sony a7 IV does get released, I can imagine they're going to do a price drop around 300 pounds in the autumn time. Now, when do I expect this camera to be released? Well, so let's have a look at some of the older cameras Sony have released and try and work out on what month they're going to release it in this year. Well, if we go back all the way back to 2014, they released the A7 II and that was on the 20th of November. But then if we go have a look at the current camera, so that is the Sony A7 III, you can see that got released on the 10th of April, 2018. So unlike a lot of brands uh, these days, they don't have a particular month where they release all of their new products, such as iPhone. You know there's going to be a new Apple iPhone in September. So I personally think that they're actually going to release it before the summer sales due to them not having a particular product month. So I think they're going to release it maybe May or June time of this year. That gives it enough time for it to be hyped up after the release of the Sony Alpha 1 that was only released just a few weeks ago in January. So if I had to kind of pin my idea on the board, I personally think it's going to be either May or June or just before the sales for summer. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there are the current rumors surrounding the A7 IV, and I'll hopefully be making a future update to this video where I'll be discuss future rumors that are coming out closer to the time. But at the moment, this is pretty much the only rumors out there. Make sure to write in the comments if you are looking forward to this camera or if you've got any other rumors or if you, what even you want this camera to be like. I must say, this was an incredibly popular camera. The A7 III is enormously popular. So I can imagine a lot of people are looking forward to the new A7 IV. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.